friends so we have come to the last part of this chapter strategies for enhancement in food production now hope this chapter was very much helpful for you all so we'll just wind up okay uh, you might find there are so many contents from the plant breeding but don't worry now only this much is the content they have elaborated it with a lot of examples in your textbooks okay so that's it so don't worry so first we'll talk about plant breeding for disease resistance any plant it has to be without a disease so that is what you call it to be a disease resistance so there are two methods in disease resistance one is a conventional method and the other is mutation method okay conventional method and a mutation method what is a conventional method is that i introduce a sudden genetic change in a plant okay for example if a particular plant is not disease resistant i induce a sudden change in a plant so that it becomes disease resistant so that is what it's called to be a conventional method and i have to screen them for the resistance screening meaning check i have to check them for the resistance okay then what am i doing just because i introduce a sudden genetical change and i screen them for the resistance what happens it helps to identify my desired gene meaning to say that which gene corresponds to which character for example there is a gene a1b which is corresponding to a drought resistance there is some other gene x which is corresponding to famine resistance gene corresponding to insect resistance okay so that is what is a conventional method next is a mutation breeding so what is a mutation breeding is that i there is a plant okay i introduce certain chemicals certain radiation beta gamma radiation beta ir radiation so i introduce a sudden radiation into these plants and i make the plant into my own desirable characters okay so that is a major difference between a conventional breeding and a mutational breeding now what are the various objectives of plant breeding my major objectives of plant breeding is that first is there are more than 840 million people in our india without an adequate food without a proteinaceous food without a food containing vitamins okay so what you do is there is something called as biofortification biofortification is increasing the nutritional value of a food when you increase the nutritional value of a food that specific thing is called as biofortification so biofortification is increasing the nutritional value of a food okay now what all you could do you, with the help of plant breeding you can produce a plant with high protein content you can produce a plant with high oil content you can produce a plant with high vitamin content and you can produce a plant with high nutrients micronutrients and the macronutrients so next we'll talk about scps scp stands for single cell protein okay so scp stands for single cell protein so these are basically the microbes which have enormous protein content in them okay so they are the alternate sources of proteins for example if if the vegetarians they don't want to eat meat for protein you can have these single cell proteins okay now they are used for animal nutrition as well as for the human nutrition for example spirulina which is a blue green algae now there is a very important statistical data here now 250 kg cow meaning to say that a cow a female cow which is weighing 250 kg it is able to secrete only 200 grams of protein through its milk but a 250 kg of grams of microbes they are able to produce 25 tons why because these microbes tend to multiply so that is why 250 grams of microbes are able to produce 25 tons of proteins per day okay now next is a very very important topic which we are going to deal with is tissue culture and somatic hybridization so what is tissue culture a tissue 
of a plant so there is a tissue of a plant which is able to produce a very new plant for example a kind of tissue or a kind of cell which is able to become any kind of tissue or an organ is called as totipotency for example there is a specific cell now this cell can be can become a leaf a stem a root the xylem part the phloem part it becomes the stomata of the leaves so this cell has a capacity become to become any part of a plant so that kind of cells they are called as totipotency or totipotent cells okay we have different kinds of potency multipotency pluripotency unipotency so all this we'll be later so now that is called as totipotency next we'll talk about explant explant is any part of a plant explant is any part of a plant which is able to produce a specific effect for example there is a leaf now i cut half of the leaf i cut just 1 cm part of a leaf and this is called as my explant what do i do is when i put it in a culture medium meaning to say that the medium with the help of which the plant grows so when i put in a culture medium with the help of this explant whole of my plant grows so that is the concept of an explant did like hope you all would have understood so explant is any part of a plant from which the whole of the plant grows so that is the difference between a totipotent cell and an explant then what do you do is so there is there is a medium which you pour the medium and you then sterilize the medium so you make the medium free of microbes and you put this explant here now what happens after certain days with a photoperiodism meaning to say that you induce them under light okay be it a natural sunlight or an artificial sunlight usually they give artificial light okay so with the help of artificial light this plant is able to grow inside these jars now what do i take these plants i take these plants and make it into a potted plant so once i make it into a potted plant what happens i introduce in the field so this is the concept of tissue culture next we will see the concept of somatic hybridization so fusion of protoplast any cell without a cell wall okay which is devoid of a cell wall is called as protoplast now what i can take is i can take two plants and isolate the protoplast out of it okay two different cells and i can remove the cell wall and a cell wall less plant cell is called as a protoplast now i fuse these protoplast with the help of certain chemicals for example pg polyethylene glycol i can fuse these protoplast so now what happens the nucleus of the cell also gets to be fused up okay for example i fuse a tomato and a potato and they call it to be a pomato though pomato is a combination of the characters of a tomato and a potato but there was not any desired quality so usually somatic hybridization doesn't mean that it does not produce any desired quality but there are a lot of desired quality where a somatic hybrid produce so what is a somatic hybridization it is nothing but the fusion of the protoplast between the two different cells okay so here in this video we spoke about the two different types of uh, plant breeding technique one is a conventional breeding and the other is a mutational breeding then we spoke about the major objectives of a plant breeding and then we spoke about single cell protein and then we spoke about a tissue culture and then somatic hybridization so hope you all would have understood this chapter and enjoyed this chapter along with me this is a very interesting chapter meet you all in the next chapter so until then you can take a screenshot and bye